now that we do have the, our problem formulated in a mathematical way, it's time to implement it in a computer language. More specifically, what we want to do in this video is to go from this mathematical formulation from the previous video to a computer script that will allow us to obtain the optimal solution for the small problem that we consider in the previous video. The way we're going to do this is by using Python to uh, write our script and Gorobi as a commercial solver to compute the optimal uh, solution. You can obtain Gorobi via uh, this link and for, uh, for students and researchers working in, in public universities, this uh, is uh, free so you can get your license by uh, following this link. You can also use other languages doesn't have to be Python, it could be Java, it could be uh, C, or it could be MATLAB as your uh, programming platform. And you can use other uh, commercial tools like Cplex and Express, which are uh, for free for students. The way that you interact between Python and Groovy is via a set of commands that you add to your script in Python. Like for instance, if you want to describe your objective function, you write set objective, while if you want to define a new constraint, you write add constraint or add const. To obtain and compute the optimal solution, you write optimize, and then you can obtain the both objective function value and the values of your decision variables. You can then use Python and all the tools that you have available in Python to plot your results and to analyze uh, the optimal solution obtained by uh, Gorobi. I'm suggesting you to use Python to analyze the results because although Gorobi uh, displays on the screen the evolution and the process to get the optimal solution and it produces a log file which, where you can revisit this information, this is not complete and this, is, this does not uh, provide you uh, the details about the solution that you have obtained. So it's better to use Python to read the final solution and to display it. Nevertheless, this log file could be important for you to understand what Groovy has done to get this optimal solution. So more information can be obtained in the link there uh, in the um, slide to understand what are you seeing when Groovy is, is printing uh, some information uh, on your screen. Okay, but how do I write my uh, optimization model in Python to be solved by Groovy. Okay, I provide to you a script. I'll use these scripts, uh, some screenshots of this script to explain to you what we need to, to do there. And I also provide an input file, uh, Excel input file, where you can uh, uh, read the problem uh, discussed in the previous video. The first thing I do is to generate a set of lists in which I'll uh, store information about my problem. And this is related with arcs, nodes, and commodities. The way I model these arcs, nodes, and commodities was using the concept of objects. So each arc, each node, and each commodity for me is uh, an object. This, this is an option to use object-oriented uh, philosophy, but you could have uh, follow other simpler approaches. But I find it easier to, to understand. So what we see there in the box is a, a definition of all these objects, also in the code. And the arcs are defined according to four features, origin, destination, cost, and capacity. The commodities are defined according to three features, origin, destination, and quantity. And the nodes are defined according to two features and two functions. The two features are the inlinks and outlinks. These refer to the arcs that get into the node and out of the node, respectively. And the functions they are the ones that make this relation between a new arc that we generate as an object and uh, uh, information of the inlinks and outlinks of this node. These uh, functions are the ones defined at the bottom of this slide. The way I populate these objects is by reading the input file. So I read the input file, more precisely, I read the workbooks called arcs and commodities. I have all the information about my arcs and commodities, and then I can automatically generate all elements of the objects, arcs, commodities, and nodes. 
Once I do have that, I'm ready to start formulating my optimization model. I'll start with the objective function, but to do that, I have first to build my model, to define my model. Uh, I'll call it uh, MCF, you can call it whatever you want. And now Groby knows that there is an object called model. And the next step is to define the decision variables. And while I'm defining decision variables, I'm configuring my objective function value. Okay. And I do this first by creating a dictionary of decision variables, X, and then by going one by one through my decision variables matrix and tell uh, Groby what is the cost value that goes into the objective function uh, formulated. And this is um, done by going through a loop of uh, arcs and a loop of commodities. So uh, I have a sum of arcs in my objective function uh, formulation. I have a for loop in my code. I have a summation of uh, commodities k. I have a for loop in my code. And then I have the cost value cmk. And this goes to the parameter object in my uh, decision variable definition. I can give a name, I can define the type of uh, decision variable I'm dealing with, and this information goes to Korobi once I write model.update. So let's start by the second set of constraints, because those are the easiest to, to follow. And I start again by building a dictionary, which uh, where I'll store the, the capacity constraints, uh, so the object's capacity constraints. And then I see that I have a a summation on the uh, left hand side and this is part of what I call the quicks sum so this is what you see there in my formulation of f constraint and I have the capacity and this capacity goes on the other side so I have the, the sum over k it needs to be less or equal than this arc capacity which is the capacity uh, parameter for each arc n and because I have to write these constraints as many times as the number of arcs, then I need to put this inside a for loop that goes over all elements in L. Okay, and this way I formulate all my constraints regarding to the capacity in the arcs. Okay, moving now to the, uh, the second set of constraints. I start again by building a dictionary in which I'll store the continuity constraints. And I know that I have to repeat these constraints as many times as the number of commodities that are represented uh, in a for all at the end of my formulation and a for loop in the beginning of my script and also a for loop j that represents the for all uh, elements in a, a, the set of nodes so i'm going to have a constraint for each combination of commodity and nodes in my uh, network and then I split in three parts, like I do split my formulation of uh, equations type 1. The first one is in the case that node i is the node from my uh, origin of the commodity k. The second one is when the node i is the destination. And the final one is when node i is a transition node. I'm going to have a for loop inside the quicksum for the out uh, links minus a for loop for the in links and this gives me the balance in the node i and in the first case it needs to be equal to the quantity being generated in that node i if it's the origin in the second has to be equal to the minus uh, demands of that commodity node i if i is the destination and the last one needs to be equal to zero because it's a transition uh, node. Okay, after I do have these, I have to update again my model. And now Gorobi knows all the constraints. Optionally, I can say to Gorobi to write an LP file. This is a really important file if you want to debug, if you want to see what is the problem in your uh, formulation or in your implementation in, uh, in Python. Because this LP file, which you then can use to read in Gorobi or in any other uh, commercial solver, describes in a close to mathematical uh, way your MLP. 
So if you have a small problem, a small version of your problem, you can go through it and understand if there is something missing, if you are really uh, coding what you want to code. Okay, but this is for later, especially for debugging, as I said. The next step is to ask for a solution. So you write model.optimize, you ask Kurobi to uh, provide the, the, the optimal solution. And this is where the fun part happens. It will take uh, eventually a couple of seconds or even minutes for uh, Gorobi to solve uh, your problem, depending on the size of your problem. And then you do have the solution. And you can uh, uh, check, uh, for instance, as I provide you, a uh, check if uh, you have obtained an optimal solution or if the problem was unbounded or if it was unfeasible or, or if you obtained a suboptimal solution. That's the uh, if statements that you have there. And then you can print, including you can print uh, if it's unfeasible, you can print which constraint was not verified. The next step is to uh, print uh, the optimal solution. So here in a very simple way, I have plotted the objective function, 220, and the values of uh, flows in each one of the arcs. So you can see that I have 10 items being transported in the arc 1, 2, 10 in 1, 3, 20 in 2, 4, and so forth. And I know that the runtime was 0.01 seconds. So it was really fast. It's a very simple and a small uh, toy uh, case. And this is it. Uh, we do have our uh, result. I would like to, to call uh, your attention to the fact that uh, the way that you are building uh, your, your optimization problem, Gorobi, is formulating this tableau. So you don't see this, but uh, Gorobi is formulating a tableau every time that you add a constraint, every time that you define your objective function. So what we see here, for instance, the first line is for commodity one, uh, you see that arc one, two and one, three are leaving node one and the right hand side, that column on the extreme right hand side, you do have and uh, this needs to be equal to the demand being generated in node 1 from commodity 1. In, in commodity 2, also starting in node 1, you also have again the two uh, arcs, and this is to, has to be equal to the demand being generated in node 1. For commodity 3, you don't have any generation of demand there for commodity 3, so what goes in arc 1, 2 and 1, 3 needs to be equal to 0. And this is built for all, so this is all your constraints regarding to the flows and the demands uh, for per commodity. You also have the here uh, constraints that regard the capacity. So if you sum the flow in arc 1, 2 for all the commodities, this needs to be lower equal than the capacity that you have defined for that specific arc. So this is your mathematical uh, model being formulated in a tableau, and this is what Groby use to apply the simplex method that you probably remember from your operation research uh, lectures. This is important because we are going to revisit this for later for in another lecture to use a technique to solve more complex problems. Finally, we have used just simple uh, constraints but there could be the need of uh, using a little bit more complex constraints. So I leave up to you to think how you would implement things like, I want to have two decision variables, one on the left hand side and the other on the right hand side. So this is not very complex, but have a, a, a thought and consider how can you implement this using Python uh, or uh, the, the programming language that you are using. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye bye.